would feature heavily for the Springboks this summer, will you? Yeah, Simon, another hugely destructive performance by the Blue Bulls, and yet we seem to be talking about one man again, Pierre Spies. It's not surprising in a country that's so, so wonderful in terms of its physicality and power, Pierre Spies seems to lead the way in this front. He's just a tremendous physical specimen. He is a lethal weapon. I'd like to focus, first of all, on his straight-line foot speed, the importance of keeping hold of the ball in the opposition 22, because if you turn it over, an old-fashioned Victor Matfield fly hack, and look at him chase down. Would you fancy being Colin Slade, the Canterbury Crusaders reserve? But look, he just drags him down and hunts him down. Now, we know Sean Edwards is a defensive guru, but he'll have his work absolutely cut out. You have to be able to look after him first off as a power runner or secondly as a support runner. They love to use him off shortened lineouts. Here against the Crusaders, they use Pedri Wannenberg as the first up runner and Species just lurking outside him. He's waiting for the man to get across the gain line and once he gets across the gain line, he runs a great line and look at him just power away from, from the defensive line. He also likes to go round people if he can't go through them. Here, this is A.D. Jacobs against the Sharks in the final round of the Super 14. Jacobs could be playing outside centre for the Springboks. And then, this is the stuff we love to see, the sheer power and dynamism. The knee lift, the step away, and Kankowski, he uses as a speed bump. Just incredible. Now, you can tire of watching certain tries in your life, but there's others you want to watch over and over again. And in the Super 14 semi-final, the Crusaders had the ball, a little chip in behind. We see Spies here. He's aware there's a lot of real estate in front of him, a lot of open space. He calls for Dupree and he just wants the ball. Now, I love this canvas of a field, this picture, as he runs away from the Crusaders' three-quarter line. Tremendous pace, tremendous arcing and weaving. But I prefer the next camera angle. Imagine being the tackler as this giant physical man all elbows, all knee drive, arcs, weaves, and then sprints away from you with tremendous acceleration. Now, whilst I've got the boys with me in here, I'd like to ask Jan that if you were out there, <laughs> apart from shouting either drift yeah, or your, your man, man, oh, your man. <laughs> how would you go about stopping this Yours man? Yours all, all the way. Uh, an immense performance. An immense performance of him. He's the ultimate predator. You just imagine him hunting down his prey on the big African plains. But what are you going to do? Deny him that big space that he likes. Mm. You know, make him work that <coughs> harder. Deny him that platform in which to launch his, his rampages upfield. Work in the, in the set piece to drive him more. Can bring him back in to do the honest work you expect of forwards. Not running up and down the field like a like, like a back. You can't have that. But he is such an immense pre uh, presence. So total organisation and commitment in the tackle. Well, and yeah. Dowie, a question for you. Basically, has a scrum half. Mm. Can we stop him at source? Can we stop him at the platform? You've got to tie this boy in. You've got to keep him in the tight. And one way of doing it, he'll be wanting a big right hand side from his tight head to allow him to go into the midfield there. So the likes of Sheridan, the likes of Jones, have got to absolutely drive up that side and almost our tight ends absorb it. That that allow our open side to try and get at him and almost like you said, scrum off, get in there, get in there, try and get in, your hand inside that ball to disrupt the nine and eight and stop him going in the midfield, but also the rolling malls come back in, so tie him in. Yeah. You know, keep him tight and tearful so he's not terrorising our midfield. Well, we can clearly stop him from in here. <laughs> Sean Edwards and the boys have got to try and work out a potential to, to stop him out there. That's a tremendous area of strength for the South Africans. One area of concern they have had is the fly half area, but in the Super 14 semi-final, Mornay Stain seems to put his hand up as a guy who wants to fill that jersey on June the 20th. When he follows people like Nas Bota, Joel Stransky, Yanni De Beer, he just seemed to slot straight into that mould. A blue ball where the second test we played at Loftus Versfeld in the Super 14 semi-final, he knocked over drop goal after drop goal. And when you can smash over a drop goal at altitude from 55 metres, that ability to keep the scoreboard ticking could be absolutely crucial in a tight test series. Mornay Stain seems to have put his hand up for the Springbok number 10 jersey. Thanks, Will.